Okay, as I said, today is the solemnity of Christ the King. Okay, uh, I think Father Mark mentioned to you last week that in our household, we would have this uh, conversation, okay, about the great chastisement, you know, and everything like that. And, and we would ask each other, like, let's say we go to a deserted place, what are the three things that we need to bring to survive? Okay, in that, play, in that place, there's no electricity, no Wi-Fi, nothing. What are the three things? And I said, oh, I'm so tempted to say, I want to bring my coffee, my dark chocolate, and my mixed nuts. Those are my top three snacks that I like to eat. Of course, if I, if I bring those three things, I won't survive. <laughs> okay, and so we, 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 we had this discussion back and forth. And we came to conclusion that we need to bring three things for us to survive. What are those three things? I'll share it with you. Maybe you could come up with your own three things. The first one is something to purify the water so that you could drink. Okay? Go to an island. You can just drink the water in the lake. Or you, when you go to a, a, a sea, you can just drink it. You need to have a, 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 a water filtration system so that... When, when you filter the water, you could drink it. So that's one. The second one is bring a knife so that you, know, you, you will be able to um, prepare some food for you. Now, the last thing, the third thing is, I think, the most important one. Bring matches or lighters that you would make fire. Okay? And uh, so here, uh, I... I so here, I'm, I'm making here a campfire, and w when you're camping, it's so nice to have a campfire, because when you have a fire, there's so many uses of a fire. One use of the fire is it will uh, help you cook things or boil water. You use fire for that. Use fire also to warm yourself. If it's cold, especially right now, if you go, do go winter camping, it's nice to have a, a campfire. The other thing is that um, it will give you light. There will be some light, or else it will be so dark. So some light. It will also ward off mosquitoes or flies during bug season. And the other thing is that fire will help protect you from wild animals. Bear, whatever, moose. You have fire, it will protect you. So fire is very important. And... Uh, I just learned how to make some campfire. It's not easy, huh? You need to make some um, tinder, and then after that, you put some kindle, and then after that, you put some wood. There's a process to do, there's a process to do that. And uh, so I'm just so happy there in that picture. That was my first campfire that I was able to do by myself. So I'm just so proud of it, right? So I see that in, in, in that picture. And uh, the reason why I'm sharing this is that God uses imagery in the things that we have to show who he is, okay? And, uh, and, and he uses the imagery of fire. I don't know if you remember in the book of Exodus, in the book of Exodus there, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 10, Moses, okay, uh, he was in exile there, uh, he saw this, that, you know, he saw that there's this burning bush. And this is what he said. This is strange. Why isn't the bush burning up? So what happened there is that he got curious. He went close. Okay? And then, and then when, when he was coming closer, the Lord told him, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals. You are standing on holy ground. And the Lord revealed himself to Moses, he said, I am the God of your ancestors, Abraham, J Isaac, Jacob. And what he said there is that I have seen the cruelty of uh, the Israelites being treated by the Egyptians because the, the Israelites were, were in slavery in Egypt. So God is saying, I, I saw, I saw the cruelty that is happening. 
What else did, did God say? It says, I have heard the cry of my people. And I have come down to rescue them. And of course, in that conversation, the Lord asked Moses to liberate the Israelites from Egypt. And we see here the burning bush signifies the Lord's great love for his people. And that love doesn't consume himself. It will not be extinguished. Okay? The Lord's love is burning. And you see here how he, his great concern, his great love for his people. And his great desire, his great longing to liberate his people from slavery. Okay? So that's from, Ex uh, I want you to read, I uh, hope you re read the Bible, Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. Now, that burning bush is a prefigurement of what's going to happen when Jesus comes. Okay? Of course, Jesus was born uh, through Mary. We already know he died on the cross out of great love for us. But it's as if that it was not enough. That he died on the cross out of his great love for us. Because people are still doubting of his great love. And that's why when, when uh, in, 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 in the 17th century, Jesus appeared to St. Sister Mar Margaret Mary Alacoque a visitation nun on December 27, 1673. He revealed his sacred heart as a symbol of his love for mankind. Okay? Saying, he was saying this, my divine heart is so inflamed with love for mankind that it can no longer contain within itself the flames of its burning charity and must spread them abroad by your means. The Lord needed to show the people of His great love. He exposed His burning heart to show how much He loves us. I read this when I was already in the seminary. And I, I confess to you, for so many years, I doubted the love of God. I, I was baptized as a Catholic. I studied in a, in a Catholic school from elementary to university. I've heard about the love of God, but it's all head knowledge. I didn't experience it. And because I didn't experience it, I doubt the love of God in my life. Especially knowing my sinfulness, how could God love me? A great sinner. So I doubted the love of God. And, I, and it, in my last year of university, when I went through the life of the Spirit in seminar and got baptized in the Holy Spirit, that was the first time that I experienced the love of God in my life. And it's no longer had knowledge. I've experienced it personally. The burning love of God in my life. Today is Christ the King. Okay? Today is Christ the King. And He is the King of love. I want you to listen carefully to what I'm going to share with you from the book Insinu Yesu. Okay? It's from page 199 for those who have that book. This is private revelation given by Jesus to a Benedictine monk. And this is what Jesus said. Pray to me with confidence then, for I am the king of love. And I want to be recognized as such. I rule in souls not by coercion, but by most, but by most sweet love. I rule as a child king with gentleness and within an affection that is holy, divine. Make me known as the king 
of love. As the little poor one who waits to be admitted into your company and welcomed into the midst of you, there to rule, not by might, but humbly and with an infinite compassion. If souls knew my kingship for what it is, they would submit to me in an instant, and I, in response, would fill them with happiness in my heart. It is a great thing to be loved by the heart of a king, and I am the king of all that is, that was, and that will be. My heart is yours. Give me your heart in return. I'll repeat the last line. My heart is yours. Give me your heart in return. And it's a, so it's a beautiful thing, right? And it, maybe, you, maybe it's, you're, you're like me. Maybe you haven't experienced the love of God in your life in a very personal way. A very beautiful prayer that we could say is this prayer. It's also from the book Insinu Yesu. Jesus, King of love, I put my trust in your merciful love. Okay. I'd like to share with you a story that I've read. It's a Bible teacher. It's a Bible teacher. Okay. So this Bible teacher knew the Bible from cover to cover. And he memorized a lot of scriptures. Okay? He memorized a lot of scriptures. But at the age of 65, he started to lose things and he started to forget things. What happened there was that he got lost on the streets. He didn't know where he was. He didn't know what he was doing. Okay? So people found him and then he, want, he went to a medical exam. And later on, it was found out that he has Alzheimer's. Okay, so with Alzheimer's. So he started not recognizing the people around him. He also started forgetting the Bible he memorized. Okay? So when he would be asked of a Bible verse that he could still remember, he could only remember this Bible verse. And this Bible verse is this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. That's the only Bible that he could still remember. After a few weeks, he could not finish saying the entire verse. All he could say is that, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And on his deathbed, people notice that his lips are moving. So they put their ear on his lips. And there, they could hear him say this scripture passage. And he could only say, for God so loved. And he kept repeating it again and again and again. For God so loved. And you see here, even on his deathbed, he was still teaching people about, he says, you know, it says here that, that the most, he was still teaching the most important Bible lesson. And what is that? That all the knowledge of Christianity can be boiled down to one truth. For God so loved. 
Only one truth. For God so loved. Have we experienced the love of God personally in our life? You have to ask yourself that. And that's why for us, for those who have been here last week, we, we, you've heard the, the, the very powerful and inspiring homily of Father Mark. That why, that's why we're doing this Operation Hearts on Fire, six months of journeying together. And under the, the, this Operation Hearts on Fire, there are three pillars. The first one is catching the fire. The second one is enkindling the fire. The third one is sharing the fire. Okay? So, eh, that's why it's very important for us to catch that fire. And how do we catch that fire? By encountering our Lord. Jesus, the King of love, in a very personal way. The, the one thing is that Jesus exposed his sacred heart to St. Saint, Saint Margaret Mary Alacoque. And he is exposing that sacred heart to each and every one of us here. Okay? For us to be able to experience that our hearts on, be on fire is... By having, you know, it, it, it's whenever we have a devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus, okay, and made a commitment, a commitment to live under his kingship, we thereby accept his lordship over our families and over the world. That sacred heart builds a fire of love in every heart. If they have Jesus, if we have Jesus, no matter what denomination, Protestant, whatever, if they have Jesus, they have the fire, and that fire is the Holy Spirit burning in our hearts. I know we're going to join you here six months until Pentecost, but we don't need to wait until Pentecost to catch this fire. Even now, when you, have a, when you, when you make a commitment to, to have a devotion to the sacred heart, to put Jesus as king of your life, of your family, I guarantee you, your heart will start to burn for love for God and love for others. The scripture passage that I want you to remember is from Luke Chapter 12, 49. I have come to set the earth on fire. And how I long, you could change that long to desire, to thirst. How I long for every heart to be already ablaze within, with this fiery passion for God. Mm -hmm.